So, back for another episode of Believe in Boit with this Altaria team. I'm hoping I do run into at least one rain team throughout... Oh, that's a slacking without wheezing. Um, we try to at least into at least one rain team. This is an interesting one, though. Alexam, Blastoise. Very interesting picks. My Raikou would be great if it weren't for that Rhyperia. I do want Gyarados because of the right period, so it's definitely Raikou and Gyarados at some point. Infernape is pretty nice, but the Alakazam does outspeed. Which could be a little bit awkward, especially because it most likely has inner focus and you can't fake it out. Although, a nice cool spear might get the Alakazam. Do I need the Togekiss at all? Togekiss isn't great. Altaria is never great if there's no rain, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave with Mamoswine. I'm gonna leave with Mamoswine and Raikou with... No, I'm gonna leave with Infernape and Mamoswine actually. And then Gyarados and Raikou in the back. Sorry, Altaria. I need to face some rain for you to actually be okay. Interesting. Spacking and Rotom. So, that's pretty good for my Infernape. Not so good for my Mammoth Swine. I don't think my close combat will KO the Slacking either. It's pretty bulky. I'm going to go into my Raikou, and I will just immediately close combat the slacking. I do not expect it to KO, it's got amazing HP and some reasonable defenses, but this will put it in range of whatever attack else I would want to go for. I'm hoping for like a nasty plot or something for the Rotom, that would be most ideal, but that's a Choice Scarf trick. No, I'm a Choice Scarf Inferno, okay. That's one way of breaking a Focus Sash. The slacking's going to do a huge amount of damage, but won't be able to move the next turn. Is it going to be Giga Impact, or is it going to be just Body Slam? Um, um, okay. Well then, that was not expected. <laughs> that was definitely not the move I was expecting to come out of that slacking. I will absolutely calm mind, uh, and then I would have to close combat, and I think it is probably better to do it into the Rotom, because then I can put it into plus one Thunderbolt range. Now, it doesn't matter too much if I lose my Infernape to an attack from the Rotom this turn. It could be switching out the Slacking as well, like so, into a uh, close combat resist. That's not a resist, so I'm a little bit sad I didn't close combat that, because getting the damage on that, it would two shot. Oh yeah, that would have been much better to... Close combat that. So next turn it will be protecting a close combat the right period. I think. So my Raikou's looking pretty good at the moment if that right period just gets put low enough. Especially if it's a special <laughs> special slacking. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they definitely get to just EQ here and all that, so I will protect. And I will close combat the Rhyperia. Unfortunately, I didn't just try and take the KO on the slacking, because then I'd have been in a wonderful position where I can just close combat the Rhyperia again and Thunderbolt the right zone. But this is fine. Because this shouldn't KO the Rhyperia. I don't know why they did that, but that's fine. That is a two shot. It's pretty close, but it is a two shot indeed. And then there should be an earthquake. And I'll lose my... Nope, just... Okay, okay, so we're against a potential singles player turned into doubles player. Because that was not an ideal play from them. My Sash was already broken on the Infernape. I guess it's going to chunk the Gyarados a little bit, but generally... Ooh, leftovers. Ooh, does that put it... I'm going to have to switch to Snarl instead, it seems. Can't go for Thunderbolt, because just in case that Rhyperia is able to survive now, I will need to switch it up and go for Snarl instead. And they're still just protecting the Rotom. Do they realize they're not choice locked anymore? 
Like they've got a focus sash on the Rotom, they can they can do whatever they want. They don't have to keep going for protect. Interesting having protect on a choice car for Rotom as well. Trick makes a lot of sense, but then usually you have like discharge, and then well, that's the point of the the choice item on the Rotom, isn't it? It makes makes room for discharge, especially next to a Rhyperia. I feel like this was probably a match I could have brought Altaria to and been okay. There's the Alakazam. But they put me faster than it, so I will be able to get a close combat into it. I will just snarl. Uh, is it worth preserving the Infernape? I don't think so. I think I would prefer to just get the damage down onto the Rotom. We'll see if they think they're still choice locked into protect. Oh, they've, they've they realized that they are not choice scarf anymore. But that's fine. This will KO three Infernapes with all my close combat drops. And this will do a nice chunk, and I was hoping it would two shot Alexam, but not quite. But that's okay. I can just go into Mama Swine, Icicle Spear, the Alakazam, and Thunderbolt the Rotom. Although that's a slacking now, but that's okay. I still get to just Icicle Spear the Alakazam. See how fast the slacking is as well, where it outspeeds my Roku. Because my Roku isn't max speed. It's bulky, like it should be. Um, they brought all six Pokemon, didn't they? It seems like it. Well, we're going to beat six Pokemon with just four. Nice Stealth Rocks. Yeah, they brought all six. So, Calm Mind, Icicle Spear, the Alakazam. The Zap boss is not a threat, so I will just keep Calm Minding in its face. And two spears should be enough on Alakazam, its defense is terrible. So, that's good. I'm faster than the Zapdos, which is nice, so I'll take even less damage than I would have done. Weren't you the one who set Stealth Rock? Why would you do such a thing? That's... that's quite anti-synergetic, isn't it? Setting up your Stealth Rocks and, like, my Gyarados is okay now. Why would you do such a thing? Are you gonna try and zap cannon me? Is that what it is? Or like thunder, or whatever. I'm pretty sure I'm still perfectly fine at the moment. My plus two thunderbolts should be able to oko this blastoise. The icicle spear should be able to deal with the zap loss if it gets at least three spears. I don't think two would be enough, but three should be. But that was strange. Not really sure why they would defog away their own stealth rocks from my side of the field, so. But I am not complaining. So is two enough? Ooh, three won't be enough. I'll need four. I only got two. That's fine. So like Zabdos is not doing much at all, so I don't really care. Ooh, Wackenberry will save this Blastoise. That means I might lose the Mammoth Swine here. Good item choice. Good item choice. Um, they are still just defogging. They really want to... Hit a inaccurate move. Here comes a Hydro Pump that's definitely going to hit now. But well, Hydro Cannon is definitely going to hit. That's alright though, because they are um, recharging, and I know my Raikou outspeeds their Zapdos, so I can just Thunderbolt the Zapdos. It's in range now, and I'll get to Dragon Dance. So that's fine. But at least that was something with the defog of making sure that Hydro Cannon hits. Any good election choice of the Wackenberry, but I'm still absolutely fine. Should be able to sweep through after this. 
because I'm very confident the Zapdos gets KO'd. I'm very confident whatever switches in gets KO'd because everything's taken so much damage at this point. So Slacken will get KO'd. Rotom's in range of the um, Thunderbolt as well, so things are looking very good. Even though they brought six Pokemon. And this is like not quite VGC as such, but still. I do feel like this is probably supposed to be a singles team, but they just happen to be doing a doubles battle. I don't know what's common in the single stuff. I don't really follow too much singles at this point. So I'm not sure what would be... What would be considered common? Uh, so... I'm waterfalling one of them. Which one do I waterfall? I think it's more important that I KO the Rotom, because the... If either of them are able to survive this plus one waterfall, which I don't think they will, uh, then Gyarados is still surviving the turn. So, yeah, Blastoise gets KO'd, Rotom will get KO'd. It might still outspeed my Gyarados, to be fair. It might still outspeed because it's Choice Scarf might be Timid Max, but no, no, it's not. So, that's fine. And then we'll just get to deal with the Zapdos. So, still being able to. Still being able to win with four Pokemon against six is always nice. Uh, it seems like people don't know the the gentleman's rule with the 2021 2022 code. It should be a VGC battle, but there we go. For the most part, I've been finding people that have been doing a 4v4. So, very good. But unfortunately, Altaria has still not done anything yet, but we will run into that rain team at some point, I'm sure. But, you know. The other Pokemon are pulling their weight, so it's fine. Oh, that's a cool team. There's no weakness policy in this in this game, so Regirock seems a little out of place. It's cool to see a PZ. Okay. So I'll leave with Mamoswine because there's a Latios. My Raikou's look looking pretty good. I think I'll go with Mamoswine Raikou. Uh, Gyarados is pretty reasonable. Altaria is terrible. As always, unfortunately, that's how this goes sometimes. Fanape is pretty decent. Togekiss is uh, okay. I will bring in Fernape. And then it's just, what's the final one? You know what? Terrible idea. But here it is. <laughs> if I'm unsure on the final Pokemon, let's just go with the fun conventional one. So. Alright, do they Tailwind? Do they Trick Room? Who knows? Who knows? But I'm going to have faith that a Mamoswine can Oko a Latios. Like, I'm pretty confident that is the case. We'll have to see if their choice go off on the PZ, which they are indeed, and that is a terrible start for me. They send the Raikou. Okay, so we're going to trade one for one here. That's a shame because my Raikou was very nice in this matchup, but there we go. At least I get the paid switch into my Infernape, and I can just definitely close combat KO this PZ. So, like, that's a trade one for one, but I'm going to get the better ends next turn because I get a KO. Unless they go into Togekiss, but I'm still going to be able to get an Icicle Crash into the Togekiss. So that would be okay. And it's Metagross. Okay, so that's fine. So that means I am switching into Altaria for the first time. And definitely close combating the PC. And this will absolutely KO. So that, that was a acceptable trade. Get, even though Raikou was amazing in this matchup, like that's a fine trade given that they have to recharge. Let me just see what the, the Metagross ends up doing. If it's a nine head into Altaria, that will hurt a lot because of this hasty Altaria, but that is as ideal as you could get. Because it has to recharge. Close combat is absolutely a KO on PZ. And then... I can get up a Tailwind if I want. I can Encore the Metagross, which I do definitely want to do. Uh, unless it goes into Togekiss. Togekiss would be the worst case here. If it's a Raikou, that's, that's alright. I can just Earthquake. 
And it is Togekiss, okay. So I don't feel the need for a Tailwind here, especially because my Altaro is Timid Max. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to Sky Attack the Togekiss, and I'm going to attempt to Encore the Metagross. And we'll see if they follow me or not. And that, yeah, no, this is absolutely perfect at this point. They could Bullet Punch, nope, that's fine. Encore, and then I can Encore the Togekiss. They would have to lock into Follow Me if they want to stop locking into Protect, but... Um, Unfortunately, the Sky Attack is wasted into a Protect, which isn't ideal, but there we go. Would have been better if I'd have just gone for Fire Blast, but that's okay. Like This is a perfectly acceptable situation, because they are guaranteed to Protect on the Metagross this turn. Uh, is it worth going for Sky Attack again? No, because I'm going to lock them into Protect, so that defeats the point completely. So... Might as well just try and get some damage onto the Togekiss. But I will just Encore them. Unless they have like extreme speed, but even then, like, doesn't really matter. So that was guaranteed to happen. Next turn I can Overheat and Fire Blast it. And now they're just locked at this point. Like, the game is effectively over. Nice chip. Oh, I got the burn as well. Nice job, Altaria. Well done. So now the Togekiss is guaranteed to protect, and the Metagross has to get a double. I guess that the, it's not completely over, because if the double and triple protects end up working out for them, they could get out of this a little bit, but at the moment they're completely locked. So um, I will go for a Sky Attack into the Togekiss this turn on the guaranteed protect, and I will overheat the Metagross. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a forfeit at some point, but they are playing it out, which is very nice of them, uh, letting me hopefully see the Sky Attack animation hit. So, let's see. Overheat is going to be strong enough. It is not quite going to be strong enough, but that's okay. I will go for a close combat next turn. Uh, although they are going to be... Um, no, the Encore should be running out, so... But here comes another Sky Attack. Predicted the Protect of the Togekiss very nicely with that charge turn of the Sky Attack. And then... I want to see how much damage it does. So they could protect, but it's fine. They're in range of close combat at this point. I will just go for the close combat. Please let me show the animation of the, of the Altaria. Don't get the double protect on Togekiss. Let me see what Sky Attack looks like. Because you, nev you never see Sky Attack. Let me see Sky Attack. Show me Sky Attack. They're taking their time. Oh, oh. Yeah, let's go. Just hit the Sky Attack. Hit the Sky Attack, please, Altaria. Nice percent accurate. Show me the move! Nice. That was alright. It's terrible damage, considering it's a 140 base power move, but it's for a Ludicolo specifically, so it's fine. I guess somewhat a Brelum, but there we go. Uh, I will, even though my position is pretty much locked because I have the Mammoth one that can ice course in the back, it is optimal to go for a uh, encore again, like it doesn't matter. I will just ice cool spear them at some point. Like I missed the overheat. It was suboptimal to do that, but you know, it doesn't matter. It would have ended the game a little bit earlier with that critical hit, but at least we get to see the dozen gleam come out from them. So I don't think that was a good showing of Altaria as such, but at least it came to the match and did some damage. So. That's all right. Uh, yeah, we're just over here again. Doesn't really need to be close combat at this point. There we go. And I'm in blaze, so this will KO, even though I've got my minus two. So uh, I'm, gl I'm glad Altaria has done something. Even though its job could have been done by pretty much every other Pokemon, I'm glad it did something.